have you ever thought when we book any cab service how they are able to assign a driver which is very near to us or how banking systems are able to detect a fraud in real time when we place any order in e-commerce or when we place any order for food how we are able to track it whatever the real world system that we interact with how they are able to manage this thing in a real time it's all happening because of one thing that is kafka so be it microservices world where in terms of any kind of async communication or if you are dealing with data where you have to process any data in real time then one thing that you need to learn is kafka in this video we are going to talk about first of all what is kafka what are its core component how kafka works internally then we will try to understand kafka architecture and we will explore kafka replication so let's get started so what is kafka kafka is an open source distributed streaming platform sometimes we say it's a messaging queue or sometimes it's a publisher subscriber system which is true because it combines the feature of a messaging queue and publisher subscriber system so when we say queue it lets one system send a data another system receive it when we say publisher subscriber that means a multiple consumer could read the same message there could be a scenario where you could have multiple producer and multiple consumer we also say it's a distributed system so that means kafka runs on a multiple servers for scalability fault tolerance and high availability and kafka stores the message in a persistent way and it stores a message in a log fashion in a structured way so that consumer can reread the message at any point in time using the offset that we will understand so technically kafka is a distributed fault tolerant system that lets you publish store and consume streams of record in real time that to at massive scale now let us try to understand kafka components in detail now kafka is all about these three components if you could understand these components then you are good to go with kafka so first is producer as the name suggests that producer is a entity which produces a data or sends a data then we have broker now what is a broker we know that kafka is a distributed based system so whenever we install kafka on any machine or a node that becomes a broker if we are using kafka on a single machine then we would have one broker if we are using kafka on multiple machines then multiple brokers would be there and we are, when we will combine multiple brokers then we could say it's a kafka cluster so as you could see in this diagram in this particular setup we have three brokers that means we have installed the kafka on three different machines that we could see three brokers are there and now the consumer consumer is a entity which consumes the data or which reads the data so basically producer produces the data consumer consumes the data and broker is your actual entity which facilitate the communication between producer and consumer or you could say your actual data gets stored on the broker now we will understand each component in detail now we need to understand that whenever we are talking in terms of kafka whenever we are publishing something when we are writing something into kafka or we are reading something into kafka we talk in terms of message message is something like a single record or an event for example when a user is uploading something a event gets triggered it's like a message for a kafka when user is signing up you are again getting an event it's again like a message so whatever the events that you want to capture in kafka what we say message when we club similar type of messages or event together then we say it's a topic whenever kafka producer has to write a data it writes a data in topic and when consumer has to read the data it has to read from the topic first a topic would be created and then under that topic we would have partitions so partition is used for the parallelism that we will understand uh, in a moment so what happens is now let's try to understand with this example let's say in this particular topic we had three partitions so partition 0 partition 1 and partition 2 that means uh, when a producer will write a data it will write a data into three different partitions suppose it has to write 120 events so 40 events will go here 40 events will go here 40 events will go here these 0 1 2 is like a message or event kafka is maintaining the offset it's like a index position so that it can come to know that from where which position you have read the message and from which position you have to start reading the message for that one it maintain offsets and whenever kafka has to write it writes at the end of this one so you could say this is the oldest message this is the newest message the back end when we say that broker where broker is a entity where your actual data gets stored so when you create a topic let's say your your data is getting at some location root test root 
and then let's say Kafka. Now, if you will create a topic, let's say test, then a test directory would be created. And under that, sub directories would be created in partition 0, partition 1, and partition 2. And then under that, you would have your actual messages. So, this is how Kafka stores the data or publisher when it writes, it writes into the file system in this way. So let's revise what we have done. So in this example, producer is writing a data as we have, uh, as we have seen that broker is where your actual data would get stored. Now, for example, it has created one topic click. Similarly, we have another topic upload where this data is getting stored. Now with respect to this topic, we have this partition and we could see these messages. And with respect to this, uh, this topic, we have this partition. Now let us try to understand from consumer point of view, what exactly, you know, how consumer reads the data, what are its concept, consumer subscribe to a topic. First of all, consumer group gets created. Consumer group is an entity where you could have multiple consumer. So group of consumers are managed by consumer group. For example, in this particular, particular example, we had one consumer group one and we had this one consumer. So in this topic T1, we had four partitions, zero, one, two, three. Now this consumer will read all the partitions because it had one consumer. Now in this example, what we have done is to improve our performance, we had created one another consumer within this consumer group. Now, as you could see that now each consumer is reading from two partition. Now in this example, if you see, we have one topic where four partitions are there and in consumer group, we have four consumer and that means each consumer is reading from each of the partition. Now in this example, if you see, we have three partitions and but we have four consumer that that's why the fourth consumer is sitting idle. This is very important concept and generally being asked in most of the interviews. If we have more number of consumers than partition, the more the consumers will sit idle. If we have less number of consumers and more partition, uh, then consumers will read from multiple partitions. For example, if we have 10 partitions, and then five consumers, then each consumer will read from two partition. If we have 10 partitions, 10 consumers, then each consumer will read from one partition. If we have 10 partitions and 15 consumers, then five consumer will sit idle. So we need to understand this concept. Now let's see another example. So in this example, we have two consumer groups. What is the use of that? Now we need to understand within consumer group, now Kafka takes care that each consumer will read from different partition and will take care of uh, what messages it has read from which the offset it has read. Now what if let's say you have one topic, but you have different teams that want, they want to read the data from the same, same topic. So in that case, you would create a different consumer group and then you will create consumers under those consumer groups. Now this consumer group and this consumer group will read independently. That means that when you are creating a consumer group two, in that case, it will start reading from the start. And in this example, as you could, as we could see that consumer one is reading from partition zero and partition one and consumer two is reading from partition two and partition three, three. here, each consumer was reading from each of the partition. So all in all, that within a consumer group, if you are creating a consumer, then Kafka will distribute the messages among different, different consumers and it will assign different different partitions so that it could read from different, different partitions. If you are creating a different consumer group, then it will work independently. Now, since we have understood most of the concept, let's try to understand the Kafka architecture. It's very, very simple. So you have producer, which is pushing the data to Kafka broker within broker. We have topics and within topic that we have different, different partitions. So it works on a push pull model where, where your producer is, uh, you know, producer can write independently. Consumer doesn't have to match speed and uh, multiple producer could write it and uh, it writes in the form of topic. And then you have consumers, which basically pulls the data based on its processing speed. And then it again, it's subscribed to a topic and then it reads the data. And uh, within that topic you have, since we, we know that within the topic you have partitions and based on the partitions, you can create different, different consumers. 
KRAF controller uh, earlier in the existing architecture we used to have a zookeeper which used to manage our metadata in terms of topic management in terms of offset management but all those functionalities were handled by zookeeper but in the new versions of Kafka there is no dependency of zookeeper now this is being handled by the KRAF controller of Kafka so which takes care of all the metadata which takes care of if if any new node is joining a cluster if there has to select if it has to conduct any leader for election so all those things are being handled by kafka control now we need to understand one more concept in terms of replication code how it works so it follows a leader follower kind of strategy so it works at the partition level what it does is suppose you have a, a partition zero then what it does is it will create multiple copies of that partition and then among this let's say there are three copies and then one of them will become a leader and other will become a follower. So leader will take care of all the read write and follower will keep on getting whatever he will getting the all the data which is what, what is happening on the leader. And then if the leader gets failed, then another uh, follower will become a leader. And this is how leader follower works. Now, if you see in this example that we had topic one and then we had three different messages, foo, bar and X, Y, Z. Now they, these messages have been successfully replicated to this uh, broker. In this particular node, only foo and bar has been replicated. Third one is yet to replicate. And this is a replica leader and these are a replica follower as we have discussed and leader is responsible for all the read write. So when you're writing into Kafka or when you're reading from Kafka, then leader replica, which is at a partition level will be active and it'll make sure the read write happens. So this is all about Kafka. Now we will try 